Welcome to Jobu Today, I'm Zizi Pondevu. I'm a closer girl from the Eastern Cape, but I love the languages and cultures that we find in the world. The International Fest of Language and Culture celebrated this diversity. With Johannesburg being the melting pot of all things cultural and art, it's only fitting that we, Joburg Today, join in in all the festivities. Let's go check out the beautiful colors of the world. Actually, this is the first in South Africa. It's, it's a rotating event organized by IFLC. So they do many countries where they, where they uh, promote languages and culture. So this is the first for us as we've partnered with them. Um, the main point of this event is to unite different cultures and celebrate different languages. So it's more of a multilingual event which celebrates culture, yeah. South Africa has 11 languages. So us alone, we are a multicultural and a multilingual community. So it is important to always remind ourselves that we are unique in our differences and that we should also celebrate other cultures as we keep getting foreign, foreign countries coming to invest in this country. We really need to learn more of their cultures, more of their languages. So it's, it's a way of relating and more it's a way of bringing business in the country. I'm expecting a lot big because I'm gonna meet other people who are gonna teach me something about their culture and I am gonna teach them something about my culture. I'm looking forward to a brighter future and we thank the government for doing us uh, this big project and I think we're gonna do good as children of South Africa. Hi, I'm Rebecca and you're watching Joe Back Today. Join the conversation on our Facebook page, that's joburgtoday.tv. Follow us on Twitter, at joburgtoday. And if you're one of those people on the move, then pockettv.mobi. That's pocket with an I. We often tell the glamorous story of Johannesburg, but sometimes living in the city isn't that easy. This is Mayfair, Johannesburg, a suburb where color, culture, and language converge. In this area alone, we have Pakistani barbers, Somali refugees, Ethiopian asylum seekers, and Turkish cooks. This neighborhood, nicknamed Little Mogadishu, is home to the largest Somali population in the city. In the last two years, it has transformed from a quiet residential area into a bustling hub of small businesses. Some attribute this to the enterprising nature of the Somali community. Others, such as coffee shop owner Ibrahim Ali, insist that it is born out of necessity. It's a big problem. Now, three times now. Me, I get a big problem 2008. You know that road, Mariam Makeba, my brother, he passed away there. We killed him, and then we took all my stuff, all my customer cars, even my car, now bankrupt, and then I start now. Now, already now, now this year I can't pay for school fees my children because this year is a big problem now. He has been applying for asylum status for the last 15 years. Despite this delay, Ali says he is still a law-abiding citizen. He pays rent and supports the local economy through his business. Tensions have been simmering between foreign shopkeepers and their local counterparts for years, with accusations that foreigners are destroying and stealing local business. Many foreign-owned shops were abandoned in Soweto after premises were petrol-bombed and looted. Analysts caution against making foreigners the scapegoats for other issues. The underlying issue that we believe and that our data shows us is the unemployment. We're seeing 50% unemployment amongst young people in many of the informal settlements and especially also the rural areas. And obviously if you are young and you are frustrated and your dignity has been influenced, it is very easy to then pick a scapegoat. And we're seeing government, for example, like the minister said, we must now regulate foreign national, uh, national owned, foreign owned businesses more. But we're saying if you don't fix the unemployment problem for any, any person living in South Africa, then you're not really going to solve those issues. Minister of Small Business Development, Lindiwe Zulu, has called for a stronger regulation of foreign business and township to be fast-tracked. Authorities still maintain that these attacks are criminally motivated and not xenophobic. Despite these tensions, it's business as usual for these inhabitants of Little Mogadishu. Their hope that the South African spirit of Ubuntu will prevail. Zaida Gangat for Joburg Today. Hi, my name is Kimisha and you're watching Joburg Today. 
20 years of democracy is quite a milestone. Professor Raymond Sattner shares his thoughts in his book, Recovering Democracy in South Africa. Raymond Sattner's new book, Recovering Democracy in South Africa, is a collection of essays relating to the political situation in our country today. The main points touched upon are his perceived characteristics of society under President Zuma, the violence, the lawlessness, the corruption, and malgovernance. Sutton published this book with the hope of dispelling apathy, hopelessness, and starting an open dialogue as to where we are headed and what changes should be made and how we should go about making these changes. We need to encourage more debate. One of the problems of the present is there is a, a depoliticized atmosphere. But we also need to talk to people whom we may previously not have talked to, uh, faith-based organizations, civic-based organizations, the left, as well as sections of business, and try to build a unity behind uh, restoring the democratic promise of 1994. I don't pretend to have the answers. I'm trying to stimulate others to engage in a debate about what the answers ought to be. I am Spio Matabula for Joburg Today. Hi, my name is Peling. You are watching Joburg Today. For more, check out our playlist as well as business destination Joburg. That's it from me, Zizi Poor. I leave you with Just Ginger, Bright Lights. Back in ETV. You can only find the great white light When you're not looking And you should only look when you're willing to see What's surrounding you, please? Come on, don't look away. It'll all come back to haunt you. You owe it to yourself. You owe it to Change, my friend, when you see through who you are. You can have it all. You can become whole again. You know that's what you need. You know that's what you want. And you will see there is love in your heart Come on, don't look away It'll all come back to haunt you You owe it to yourself You owe it to
you can take control again when you see through who you are mm. 